Hey, this is Apollo, my beautiful 17 3 hands, eight year old purebred Shire horse. Seeing him like this, you can only imagine he came from the finest breeding stock and bloodlines and had only the best of care since the day he was born. And if you've watched some of my other videos, then you've seen him looking much like this. Most of the time, when you guys leave comments, it's about how beautiful he is, which is absolutely true. He is amazing. But Apollo didn't look anything like this when I first got him. So this isn't the story of Apollo, the amazing Shire Horse, but instead the tale of Apollo, the rescue horse. And in order to understand that, we have to rewind a little bit. Which brings us to this horse right here. It was my first horse. I love draft horses, of course. And this was my very first ride. And he had just bucked me off. That's why I have that expression on my face. <laughs> I'm so pissed. Anyways, he was not a good fit. Tried to kill me one too many times. And it was time to make a change. It was a really hard choice, but it was the correct one. So I started looking for a new horse. And that's when I found this ad. Instantly, my mind started thinking up fantasized realities that could be a giant black stallion-esque beast to ride into the sunset, my best friend forever, charging into battle, always has my back, slumber parties, watching our favorite equine movies together, and so forth. Now, because of circumstances at the time, I made the decision to purchase him sight unseen, something I told myself I would never do, and have him shipped to me in Scottsdale, Arizona. So it was one February morning in 2019 when I got a photo from my shipper of Apollo in transit, and I about fell over dead. I couldn't believe it. I thought to myself, what have I done? I'm so stupid. I could have just flown out there and looked at him. He looked like a 35-year-old one foot in the grave, half dead horse. He barely looked like a Shire horse to me. This poor guy had spent one of the coldest winters in Midwest history outside in three feet of mud, basically fending for himself all winter. I was speechless. I didn't really know what to do. All I could do was look at my phone and wait for updates. I was getting videos and pictures as he was traveling. It took about three days to get him to me and I was sick. I just had to wait it out. I could already tell from this video, for example, that he was a little sore, but I didn't know how bad the situation was. I knew I was gonna have to get a vet and have him x-rayed and looked at. Okay. All I could do was worry and second guess myself and wonder what I'd gotten myself into until finally he arrived and it all melted away. I didn't even care, I was so happy and he was so beautiful and beat up and rough as he was, I was in love. So first thing we did was rush him to a stall and get him some food and water so that he could just relax and calm down and eat and drink as much as he wanted. He was really jittery and looking around and didn't know where to be and paced and understandably so he went from Midwest freezing cold temperatures to Scottsdale with cactuses and uh, hot, hot sun. It was probably quite the shock for him. In fact, one of the first things he did when he got off the transport was back into a big saguaro cactus and he didn't even react. I thought this is either a really good sign that he's got an amazing temperament or this horse is about to die. His hair was a total mess. He had dreadlocks from top to bottom, huge burrs, clumps of burrs. Uh, I thought I'm going to have to chop most of this off just to be able to comb through it. And his tail, most of it had uh, rubbed off, we thought. For sure he had worms just because he was scratching and rubbing at it. Aside from that, it was crooked, which is usually a sign of malnourishment and um, muscle atrophy that comes from uh, starvation or uh, injury. Uh, the horse's tail 
especially if it's crooked, can say a lot about a horse and its uh, health condition. But mostly we just let him sleep and relax and lay down if he wanted to. But I'd bring him treats and talk to him and just kind of make sure the transition was as smooth as possible. He slept a lot. The longer he was there, the more I fell in love with him, and my mind shifted from worrying to problem solving and how to get him healthy. He was such a joy to be around, and his aura was sweet and kind, and even around my daughter, he was very conscious of her and gentle, and I could tell I was just going to fall in love with him. I wanted to spend as much time with him as I could. I didn't want to go to work. I wanted to just kind of be there and make sure that he was getting whatever it was he needed to give him the best chance of success. And what I should have been worried about at this moment uh, was my hair because it looks terrible. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but that definitely needed some attention. Ugh. <laughs> Wow, it looks so stupid. Okay, so he was disgusting disaster. Uh, th these are my hands from just petting him. Uh, he was so dirty and gross. So I got a haircut, and then it was time to get him a haircut, and it was mostly just cutting away uh, burrs and knots. His hair is so coarse. Shire Horse's hair is so coarse that it was clogging the clippers and it was a bit of a chore. She was so happy. She loved him from the first moment and she just wanted to be around him all the time. But the grooming was uh, something that definitely needed to be addressed too just because in order to get him healthy you need to be clean and uh, that took time and proper care. As soon as Apollo was settled I didn't want to waste any time. I wanted to get to work on getting him healthy. So step one was scheduling a farrier. I was really lucky that Jeremiah lives in Scottsdale. He's one of the best farriers in the United States. He's on the US farrier team. He competes internationally. He's excellent. This is a man who genuinely loves these animals and has dedicated his life to the proper care and excellence in his craft. If you're interested in seeing more videos of Jeremiah, I have several on my channel dedicated to just the sessions between him and Apollo. Really fun to watch. Uh, he's very articulate and it's always fascinating to see a master at his craft. What we discovered in that first appointment with Jeremiah as well as x-rays with the vet is that Apollo has uncharacteristically thin soles. They measure half the average thickness for a horse that's half his size, which basically meant Apollo was almost constantly in pain. Just standing could be painful for him uh, at his weight, especially if he was standing on a hard surface like concrete. This wasn't something that could be uh, corrected in one visit, but we could give him instant relief uh, by putting properly fit shoes on him. Next order of business was to address Apollo's teeth. Horses' teeth need to be floated every year, filed, or else they will uh, grow out of control. Kind of like a pig's teeth, how they grow out of the roof of their mouth. A horse can have really sharp edges, create cuts and sores all over their mouth, which makes it really uncomfortable, especially if you're trying to ride because you have a bit in their mouth and that can be very painful. In the wild, a horse will eat rocks and bark and just trash weeds and that will naturally foul their teeth down uh, in captivity you need to do that with a proper vet i don't live in scottsdale i'm there a few months of the year just for work and during apollo's time there the focus was mostly to get him back to neutral 
Uh, but in order to give him as much pain relief as possible, we put him on a strict diet to get him to lose as much weight as possible and take some of the stress off of his feet. It was really tough watching him wither away and not give him treats or a little extra food. The poor guy was desperate and starving. And I just had to let it happen. It was part of a process and I needed to trust the people that had more experience than me and that the answer wasn't always hug and kisses. Now these photos are hard to look at. They mark the end of the starvation period. So it meant that he was at his weakest and his muscle tone was the smallest it ever got. His bones were just pushing through the skin. His coat had lost all its luster and shine. His eyes were sunken. He was really lethargic. It was terrible to see. But it also meant that it was time to start feeding him more and start some mild exercise. Getting him outside and moving and seeing if we could start rehabilitating his body. Which also meant uh, play therapy, which was actually so much fun to see him change and not just his physical change, but his personality and uh, emotional state would change day to day. And he knew when I would get there, it was playtime. But something had changed for him physically and he could allow himself to stretch and jump, kick and run, and not feel pain. Watching him discover this was really wonderful. And because it was something that happened while I was with him playing or exercising, that is where the bond between him and me really started to take root. It's where trust began. and. After that, it was hard to get him to leave my side sometimes. <laughs> he just wanted to be right next to me all the time. After some time, I felt like I could start introducing some short rides. Nothing strenuous, just walking at a slow pace for 15 or 20 minutes at a time. Really needed to invest in a mounting block. <laughs> it was really interesting to get to feel his body move from his back those first few times and feel his energy go through his body into mine. It also meant that he was ready for more strenuous non-writing exercise like groundwork. Now some of you might see a bit in his mouth and say, you're abusing your horse, that's so mean. And to comments like that, my response is this. Any activity that involves animals, there are going to be people who abuse their power, choose to be cruel, and I think that's terrible and needs to stop. Then there are those people who love their animals and want to interact, want to engage, want to see them at their best. That takes training and money and so much time. When your animal is a horse, it's a powerful living organism that can kill you in an instant an animal to be respected and never taken for granted. That being said, it needs to be trained. Otherwise, you have a thousand to two thousand pound toddler with clubs for hands and feet, and it's a danger to itself and everyone around it. Those horses usually end up in slaughterhouses in Asia. That's no joke. So, did I ask him if he wanted a bit in his mouth? No. But I go to great lengths to make sure it's a proper fit, which causes no harm or pain. He never overreacts when I offer the bit to him, and never has. That's not a response of a horse that's hurting or that's been abused. He likes to work, and enjoys the time and the attention. Make work into a game, and he thinks he's playing. He's a sucker for treats and will do whatever to get one. I love Apollo too much to let him sit and waste away. He was already there when I found him. He deserves more. Sometimes I don't want to go to the gym or eat my vegetables, but it's good for me and I'm better for it. Plus, the reality that Apollo spends 95% of his life eating, sleeping, and pooping, even with all my abuse. These next few clips are great. He's just running, but it's pivotal because you start to see his body move differently, not just look differently and not just have a different temperament, this confidence about him. It's his muscle tone moving with power. And each clip, you see it a little bit more. 
and if you were to rewind and watch the one where we're doing the plate therapy, his body is moving differently, and it's uh, awesome and exciting to see him move with power and strength and grace. Horses have this incredible elegance, and to watch them move powerfully is one of the most beautiful things you can witness. And and I'm starting to see it here through these training sessions and these workouts where now he has the power and the elegance to go with the confidence and the happy demeanor, which is just Apollo. He's been like me. I'm so fast, baby, but I'm like this. And I was so fast like Mark and me. My little boy was upset that we'd sold our first horse. His name was Indy. And so to make him feel better, I told him that this was Indy. We just changed his color. This was black Indy, as if we'd gone to Walmart and just bought a new color for a horse. And it's really funny to hear him call him black Indy. He did for the first year or so. So once again, we have a workout session, work his muscles, get him sweaty, and then there's a reward. A bath, treats, a massage, whatever it might be. So that he knows and understands that if he gives me something, he gives me effort, he gives me a good attitude, then he gets something in return. And that's a really important part of the process and something that he absolutely understands. When I show up, he's there to greet me. He enjoys being around me and wants to be close to me. I'm not some evil taskmaster that's going to punish him. We are a team. When I first reviewed this clip shortly after this training session is when I realized that he's starting to get some really great muscle tone. And you start to see the shape of his body become plump and strong. I love this clip because of that. It's also fun for me to watch because it's one of those times when Apollo wasn't having the best of days for whatever reason. Maybe he could hear his neighbors getting dinner and he's stuck here working. I'm not sure. He just wasn't in the mood. And when a horse doesn't want to play along, there's not that much you can do about it. You can't force a horse to do anything. As you'll be able to see here, he drags me across 20 feet of dirt like nothing. If you can't tell from that stupid expression on my face, I didn't stop him. The gate did, and if the gate hadn't been there, he would have kept dragging me with my face in the dirt until I let go of the rope. So we didn't stop the work, we just changed the game and turned it into a different form of play. Some of these sessions were really great. Me and Apollo with a trainer, having discussions, discovering how Apollo learns, what his triggers are, and what makes him tick, and also doing the math on how to create scenarios uh, to give us all the best chance of success. It's a really fun, cool process. This is about a year after I got him, and although his tail and his hair is really dirty, you can see that it's starting to grow in really nice, and 12 months of growth compared to completely bare to the skin uh, was nice to see. It's work, it's love and treats. If it's grain, if it's an apple, if it's braiding his hair, if it's giving him a bath, the work comes first and then the reward after so he learns there is an end to the process. It's not just work, 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 work and when it's over, something positive happens. And he really likes the routine. There's horses that are afraid of routine and there are horses that really embrace it. And Paul's one of those that likes to know what's gonna happen next. I videoed this time lapse thinking it would be a cool way to show a workout session and it turns out you can't see anything that we're doing, but the clouds turned out so awesome. I love this clip because of the clouds. I hope everyone that's watching it can see it on a really big screen because the bigger the better and they just move so beautifully. 
And in there somewhere is a good workout session with Apollo. <laughs> years of training and working with horses and this still impresses me every time horses generate so much heat when you're riding on top of them and they're sweating like this you feel like you're sitting on a furnace it's so much moisture and heat that is coming off of their bodies and when it's a little bit cooler you can see it and it's impressive i love watching them after a good hard workout they just turn into a a steam room. It's looking for a treat now. Oh, drink the water. And the work never ends. Every eight to ten weeks, he needs his feet addressed, or else they start to cause him pain and he'll get sore. That's 500 bucks each time. It's not free, folks. And he earns it. I have a job, I earn my living, and so does he. Does it mean that he's eager to work every single time? Nope, but it's irrelevant. I don't wanna work sometimes, and? Oh yeah, that's the spot. Oh, that's the spot. This is one of Apollo's friends at the barn. His name is Chip. Okay, He's a we'll Frisian see. stallion. I'll be posting some videos of him in the future. He's an incredible, beautiful horse. Most horses do, but Apollo's no different. He loves his carrots, and he's really gentle with his lips. He's never bit me or even come close. He's very careful. It's fun to give him treats. He earned it. These are some stretches that we do to improve his top line and flexibility and strength. And he will do just about anything for a treat, so it's really easy to get him to do it. It's fun. This time lapse is cool because you can see his coat start to shine and glow. Horses have an oil in their skin, a natural sunblock or skin moisturizer and bug repellent and it's activated when they get brushed. He was really dirty when we brought him into the cross ties and all I do is brush him and he looks show ready. It's like he got an automotive paint job. It's so cool. There you go, buddy. Oh boy. He was so good today. Love carrots. This is one of the biggest carrots I'd ever seen in my life, and he and just he pulverized that? it. Um, eat that. Really enjoyed it. When he chews, you can hear it from yeah. deep well, inside his head one. and jaw, and huge muscles and teeth. It's crazy. It has this added, deep, pop, rumbling um, bass sound to it. It's not just it. like the teeth yeah, popping sound, it's this He's like a goat. really bass, deep sound. Try. Oh. He spit that out. He's just biting it in half. This is a really big carrot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Like in the clouds time lapse video, this is groundwork. He has a regular dressage bridle, but instead of a saddle, he has a surcingle. It allows me to long rein him and lets me put the ropes through loops in similar position as my hands would be if I were riding him. It's a great tool groundwork because he gets to learn how to use his body without the added complication of a rider and a saddle. I weigh around 180 and that changes his center of gravity a bit and also I'm constantly wiggling like an idiot and sending him all sorts of confusing signals. Here he can just focus on him and his own movement. It teaches him to become aware of his own body and posture. He's really starting to move with confidence in these sessions. Dressage is all about the natural elegance and power of the horse. An athlete in any sport has to be taught the right way to move in order to perform a specific skill. You aren't just born a professional tennis player or soccer player. Horses aren't any different. They have ways of moving and exercising that is most efficient or elegant. A wild horse running around will just throw his body any way it pleases and it doesn't know any different. If it pulls a muscle or injures itself, if it isn't as fast or as strong as it could be, then it just is what it is. Dressage teaches a horse to move with the strength of a gymnast and the elegance of a ballet dancer. It shows them how to move their body in the most effective way to create strength and avoid injury and groundwork is a great way to get started. This woman's name is Margaret. Apollo loves her to death. As you can see, she gives equine massage and she can make any horse turn into butter in her hands. He usually falls asleep standing up and passes the most relaxed gas ever when she works on him. Apollo earns these weekly massages because he's a very good boy and a hard worker. She's a super nice lady. Weekly massages brings us to this man right here. His name is David McMillan. He's a gold medal Grand Prix dressage rider and trainer. He is the reason Apollo needs these massages. He competed internationally since he was a kid, born in South Africa, trained all over Europe and the US, and I'm fortunate enough that he works at the barn where I keep Apollo because this is where and when Apollo changed into a million dollar horse for me. This was right after his first session with him, and Apollo hated me that day for bringing David into our lives. His face was saying, what did I do to deserve this? I thought you liked me. He was so toast. He quickly learned David doesn't play patty cake. It's straight to work and hard work. And the results were almost instantaneous. His muscle tone, his agility, his flexibility, and endurance all began to increase. And as he worked through hard things, he had his biggest confidence boost of all. Because Apollo doesn't say no or refuse. He really wants to please, he wants to work and get the answers right. What happens with him is he thinks he can. Oh, that's too hard, I can't move like that, or I'm not good at this. Um, that's where his struggle is. And what David teaches him is, you are strong, you are agile, and you can do this and shows him the way. It's beautiful to watch. As he learns and becomes stronger and begins to understand what is asked of him, his confidence really started to soar and he walks into a room and acts like he knows everyone's looking at him. He knows he's gorgeous and powerful. I love this shot of him right here. He just looks really slick. It was around this time that I started getting offers from random people to purchase Apollo, people who I didn't know wanting to pay 10 to 15 times what I had paid for him. But he's not for sale. And this is uh, where he is at now with his body and mind is why we have worked so hard with him, giving him time and love and patience and care for this. So I wasn't about to give that up for money. Time is the most valuable thing we have, and this is the time that Apollo and I earned together with lots of help and advice, but in the end of the day, it's just Apollo and me, and it was so worth it. This is in no way the end of the journey. It's just the beginning. But as I look back at how far Apollo has come, I'm amazed at his transformation. 
I see him every day and I still catch myself in awe of what he's become compared to what he was. The look on my face when this photo came through on my phone must have been absolutely priceless. But I wouldn't change it. It's the path that had to be for Apollo and me. And we're both stronger for it. He trusts me and he knows I'll be fair. Do I expect things from him? Of course, yes. There are no free rides in this world, but he knows that if he's willing, that I'll do everything in my power to make sure he's otherwise happy and healthy. This side-by-side -side just blows me away. I'm not even sure what to say about it, except, wow. It's stark differences. Mind-boggling. <laughs>